your fusion connector, you send in a, one of them, the, like the FCS connector, and then you set the modem to uh, DMR. Welcome back, everyone, on YouTube. This is Eric KJ4YZI. You're watching Ham Radio Concepts, and I hope you've already clicked the subscribe button and gave me a thumbs up for the effort of this video. So we're going to show you today, finally, the video that I've been waiting to post on my daily beater here. If you're talking to me on DMR on the networks, you're talking to me on this. This is the R-Finder K1. The newest model from AndroidDMR.com is the website. It's in the description. This is the UHF DMR Android smartphone from R-Finder. And if you follow me in the past, you've seen I had the M1, which was one of the originals. And they have several models at AndroidDMR.com. But we're going to check out the newest one, the K1, today. Let's get into it. Now you've clicked on the video and let's pretend you've never seen anything like this before and you have no idea what you're looking at. I'm going to sum that up in two minutes. Then we're going to go into a detailed video on this showing the differences of what I had and what makes this a really neat device for me. So let's pretend you're new to this and you have a cell phone and you have a DMR handheld and you put the two together in something like this. This is a full-fledged DMR and analog UHF transmitter inside your cell phone. Currently I'm running on AG, uh, AT&T 4G LTE. I get about 50 megs download speed and about 25 up on LTE on this. Now it's as easy as picking this thing up off your belt clip, opening an app called RFinder, which is preloaded on your phone, seeing all the repeaters in your area based on your GPS coordinates that automatically update as you travel. No more code plugs, no more worrying do you have the frequency of that repeater when you travel up the interstate. It's all pulling this over network off of the uh, RFinder Worldwide Repeater Database. Simply look for a repeater. I can see right here I'm 3.5 uh, miles from the KJ4YZI repeater in Vero Beach. Simply tapping on that, picking the talk group and the location that I want, that's it. I can talk anywhere I want through a DMR repeater without having to worry about a code plug or any kind of memories, and it still operates like a normal cell phone. This is Android. This has the ability to make calls. You can send text messages. You have web browsers. You have it all. It's a phone with your radio built in. So this right here is the newest model compared to the uh, previous models like the H1B and the uh, M1. I had the original M1. And I'm going to tell you guys, I'm going to I'm going to make this note that I didn't make before because this is a very important thing. AndroidDMR.com is uh, R Finder run by Bob Greenberg, W2CYK. Now, you may find something like this that looks exactly like this but has a name Runbo on it. And that's something that you don't want to buy if you're interested in doing what I just did. Because it doesn't come with Bob's software on it. Don't make the mistake I made a long time ago and think you're going to find one of these for $50 less from China and expect it's going to be this. It will not. It's not in English. It's not with any software. So you're going to be stuck with it. You have to go for this, uh, this specific unit and the M1 and DU and the H1B. You have to go through AndroidDMR.com, okay? And uh, I made that mistake, and I didn't say it in the last video, but make sure you don't buy the K1 from China. It's not going to work for you. Let me show you a picture of what I had previously, the M1. Now, this is a picture of the M1, which was a little more like a tablet, like a phone and tablet. Had similar features to this, but it was a little bit bigger. And I think the attention I would get from people with that compared to this, which the M1 is perfectly fine. And in fact, now it's called the M1DU, but I, being ham radio concepts, wanted to have the latest and greatest. So I sold that unit to fund this one. But I had the M1, not the M1DU. But indifference, uh, this K1, for those who are familiar, this is your battery 
that has, you know, it's like a Bofeng battery. Whereas the M1 battery would slide in like this. You know, it had a, it would slide in. It's a battery pack. So the battery is totally different. If you're a current M1 or M1D user and you want to keep your battery, sorry. But the charging cable is the same six pin magnetic charging cable exclusive to this type of radio, not an iPhone or an Android charger. Now, if you look in the back here, uh, it does say that this is the 440 to 480 megahertz model. I wanted UHF high, and I talked to Bob, and he had one of these. Um, I bought the UHF high because I wanted to use this for FRS as well as 450, uh, 463 megahertz for uh, certain work purposes at work testing systems. So I wanted to be able to have all that in here because this is my daily DMR radio right here. Um, this is a waterproof unit. In order for it to maintain its submersible integrity, you need to make sure if you take this battery off that it goes on just, you know, exactly how it should with no, uh, with no, you know, it's got to be clicked on or just right so that the rubber gasket around here mates and you don't have any water intrusion into the unit. Your SIM cards and memory cards are under this door. Now, this was a little bit different than the M1, which went in the side. If I can get this off now. There we go. Okay. This has a waterproof door in it also. And this is where your SIM cards, SIM 1 and 2, you can have dual, dual SIM cards in there, and your micro SD in here. So on the M1DU, it went in the side up here, and this one, it's under the back. So make sure, again, with these waterproofing, that they click in the way they're supposed to and they're flush so that the water doesn't go in there. Same thing for the battery. Battery should go on with no resistance and lock close like this, okay? Um, so the screen on this one is a little bit smaller than the M1DU. So if you want one and you're interested in one with just a little bigger of a screen, you're going to want the M1DU. Unless you're talking about the P1 tablet, DMR tablet, which we'll get to soon. Um, so it doesn't, I mean, the screen's not that much smaller, but again, the attention I get with this and the look and feel, this feels exactly like a handheld radio. The M1DU felt a little more like a phone. So if you're interested uh, in feeling more like a handheld, this K1 may be for you. Now, another thing, while this is booting up, let me tell you another thing here. The volume knob, uh, volume features are a lot easier with this. Being that you have the volume up top, uh, opens, you know, the volume. There's many volumes for the DMR, the speakerphone, the phone calls, the app sounds, and stuff like that. But also, you have the volume knob here. So if you're in speakerphone, rather than taking it away from your ear and going on here and selecting the slider for the volume, you can simply turn the volume up with the button on the side. And that's really helpful compared to the M1DU, I think. Uh, over the air updates. And, you know, the, the, the thing about our finder is this. The updates are constant. Never have I seen a company or a person take more... Um, you know, take more time for support. I mean, the Facebook page with the followers and our finder and the people that have these phones are littered on there. If they have any little improvement, suggestion, or error, Bob's working, Bob's working on a fix for that. And we have an update, and he lets us know on Facebook, hey, there's an update. Go ahead and go into your system and update over the air to the latest version. And boom, we have the latest version. If I go into settings here and I go to about phone um, down here. So the build version right now at this video is 12.5. For those who have this and may be watching it six months later, you probably, by the time you see this five months later, it's probably going to be up into the 15s. I mean, Bob's constantly got software updates for this. Um, so that that's amazing. So let's go back in this app for a second. The R Finder app. It loads the repeaters. I'll just, um, what I'll do is I'll turn the radio on. And I'll see if anybody here is on uh, the KJ4YZI repeater locally here in Vero Beach. I can tap up here and enter the settings if I want to change them. I could just go like this and change the talk group. Local to me, time slot 2. Send. 
and it sends it to the radio. I've been borrowing a lot from the commercial world, so that's what I wanted to go into first. But the fact that the Shark Office has the capability to do fusion of these stars is, is uh, definitely uh, an advantage. Uh, no matter what kind of radio I have, I can, I can use whatever digital the ability to filter out in the list of what you want. If you don't want to see NXDN or P25 repeaters in the list, you can take those out. Let's say you're only interested in UHF DMR repeaters. Like that. You can do that, and it's only going to show you the UHF DMR repeaters. So it's kind of like the website we used to use where you can filter out and see what repeaters are in your area for 28 megahertz or 420. You can do that right through the app. So there's a lot of other things on here that are very unique and usable other than the RF side of this. Uh, let me show you about the IRN using TeamSpeak, and also the Echolink app that was just redesigned for Android, using the PTT button here to access those in case you're not by a repeater and you still want to get on the radio using this device. Now here's another interesting topic that we covered in a previous video with the Enrico 320. This allows you on this R-Finder K1 to use the TeamSpeak 3 for the International Radio Network. Now, if you're not familiar with that, look back on my video for that on a different device, but check this out. Look how much bigger it is now on this screen. So, this, without going into a whole other video, allows me to actually talk to other hams and different crosslink servers to DMR and Fusion over network. And I assign this PTT button on this side for the IRN app, or the IRN cross-link server. So now, I can go to the Alabama link, and, or let's see. Yeah, we'll go to the Alabama link, and we will, let's see, join the channel. And right now, we are in the Alabama link to where people on Fusion and DMR and IRN can hear me through this device over network. KJ4 YZI in Florida testing. Let's see if anybody's around there. And this is again a whole separate topic you can check out on the IRN, but the app is fully capable with the unit and the PTT button on the side. And it looks like there's nobody currently on the Alabama link, but you get the idea. Uh, let me just make sure this is right. We'll go back into the welcome channel here. See if Bob's there. Uh, Bob, KB1UPZ from KJ4YZ. I just tested again real quick on the R Finder. Just to see. And did I mention this thing is super loud? KB1UPZ, yep, you still sound good. Huh. You your profile. All right, so you see the change on there. All right, thank you very much, Bob73, KJ4YZ. So um, this thing is super loud. No what? Problem. When I, when I tell you that the speaker on this device, oops, that was a lock button. The speaker on this device, all right, you see the volume sliders here. I can, this volume here would be for the app. This one would be for DMR down here, which I would change in the DMR app or on the knob up here. But anyways, if you turn this thing all the way up, let me tell you what's going to happen. Every person around you is going to hear your phone ringing. I don't care how loud of a building you're in or how loud it is when you're driving with the windows down in the car. This thing will scream at you if you want it to. And uh, even even if it's fully submersible and waterproof with it being that loud, that's, that's great. Because I've had radios in the past that were submersible, but you always lose some audio integrity here when they put that waterproof design over it and makes it not as loud. This unit right here can get as loud as you want it. It's, it can get so loud, it's annoying if you want it to. Um, so uh, if you want to be like that old guy in the next tell back then that was walking through the store when everybody can hear your conversation, this is it right here. But you could turn it down to a reasonable level and hear it without it being too loud. Um, you can also, if we go here, you can also, I like that background picture that's 
kind of what I'm involved in now. Anyways, uh, if you go to Echolink, where is my Echolink app? There it is. You can also use Echolink on here. Now, from what I've seen, and I'm going to talk to Bob about this because I'm not sure if it's on Bob's end or the Echolink end, but the PTT button over here is not, even though in the Echolink app it says uh, use PTT button, the external PTT, which would be this. But it's not working. So I'm guessing it's in the Echolink app that's not allowing this button and let because this button works with the team speak and this button up here works with dmr so i'm guessing it's in the echo link app or maybe we can come up with a fix for it and ask bob and see if that can be assigned to this button so that way we can use this button over here for echo link uh, but so you have echo link if you want you have zello you have the irn and you have dmr uhf on this phone completing it to be a complete Radio device in your hand, uh, DMR and network radio at the palm of your hand. It's really something else, man. This thing is uh, is awesome. So the video complete of the R Finder K1. <clears throat> My personal thoughts, not really being a review. Um, I like how the upgraded sound on this thing, or the, the sound is a lot louder and more intelligible. I think, uh, well, not more intelligible, but maybe louder um, than the M1DU, and also more like a handheld, the way this feels. Um, the camera quality is still great, video quality, Facebook Messenger, Facebook Live quality is still great, so my daily beater here. Um, I think if you want something that's a little bit bigger and thinner, more like a phone, you want the M1DU. If you want something more like a handheld, the K1 is the way to go. It did come with a uh, screen protector that I did put on here. I'm a stickler for that. I do not touch the screen uh, until I get a uh, screen protector on there. So if I decided right now, if I wanted to sell this, I could peel this screen protector off and it would have a crystal clear, scratch-free, untouched screen on it. Uh, that's how I am. Um, so it came with a screen protector and uh, um, a charger, of course. So I have uh, the same kind of charger. And uh, so I'm, I'm happy with it. I love this thing. So I think what we'll do is I think I'll try to get a hold of Bob and maybe do a live questions and answers. If you're interested, let me know in the comments below. And I will get Bob um, hopefully to do a live thing with me. And if you have any questions about this, we'll see if Bob can answer them. And that'll be my first live stream with anybody on the other end. So 7-3, thanks for watching the uh, R-Finder K1 video. And I hope to talk to you on DMR soon or the IRN. Uh, you'll see me around. And uh, we have some more videos on the way, so stay tuned. 7-3 from KJ4YZI.